Raymond Williams, the great Welsh cultural critic, said, to be truly radical means to make hope possible rather than despair convincing. And that partly is what I hope we're going to do today. So today um, has been the, an event called Imagine the Great Transition. Us having a lift uh, co-organised it. We've done it here at Toynbee Studios. Um, it's the first of nine events that the Imagine 2020 network are going to be doing. All of them working with the New Economics Foundation, specifically a report they produced called The Great Transition. They produced that four years ago, but we think it's still relevant and an interesting thing to kind of do a day of artist projects about. Imagine 2020 is a network of uh, 11 European arts organizations, uh, nine different countries, who decided to work together and to create th this network in response to what I would say that the big socio-ecological crisis that we are facing. NEF calls itself a think and do tank, which means it thinks about things, but it also goes out into the world to try and make things better. If you want to imagine what it's mission is, it talks about economics as if people and the planet mattered. You'd be amazed at the degree to which the underlying assumptions of the economic model that we live on a day-to-day -day basis have very little to do with understanding how you meet people's basic needs and how you operate within the planetary life support systems of the biosphere. So the Great Transition is an exercise in reimagining our economy so that it can work for everyone and work within planetary boundaries. We have co-curated and commissioned today to uh, spend some time with artists reflecting on this report um, and trying to sort of dig into it and find out a little bit more and it's very much about alternatives to the future with a focus on climate change but on, on bigger issues as well. Welcome to Families in Transit! A performative lecture by the Institute for the Art and Practice of Descent at home about the Great Transition. What we do here, Kate, is have a, a conversation about your debt. Um, so if you, if you imagine your debt as a mountain, we're going to try and clear the mists from that mountain and then, then maybe take some baby steps up that mountain. I think what stood out to me was um, the language which you got across the idea and the hope embedded within that, which is a new way of talking about it. It wasn't all doom and gloom and it was something that I could digest and I could understand and share with other people. So that was refreshing. I realised that I wanted to um create quite a kind of personal narrative because it became very clear that one of the major things that is difficult to shape within this discussion is how we change our perception of things. I think art and artists can play a role in um, developing a new economy um, by telling stories. I think there's something about trying to put ourselves as individuals into the wider framework, the bigger narratives of some of these big issues, which can seem often overwhelming. And I think art and artists um, are brilliant at reflecting on issues, refracting them back to us, um, and allowing us to sort of figure out our role in them. Words were losing common sense. Among shouts and whispers, you decided to write. It's still there, actually, but it's also everywhere. I think art's role within the analysis and the debate about um, the change is translation, specifically, a way to decode and recategorize and create emotive responses towards the change and an ownership to that. Artists and people who work in the cultural sphere, who work day to day with where good art is concerned, issuing hopefully irresistible invitations to see the world differently are going to be fundamental to the process of allowing people to imagine the world being different than it is right now. Without artists, without the imagination, it's going to be almost impossible to achieve the kind of change that we need.